Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. Today we are going to be having a look at ex April's exceptional story, Go Tell the King of Cats. And as we it's a new story, as always I'm going to remind you that if you want to play this yourself, please go and do it. Become an exceptional friend, get your extra cards in your deck, your extra actions, and access to these wonderful stories. You don't want an idiot on the internet spoiling it for you. These are wonderfully crafted stories and even though my way, there's more than one way to do it, so you might even get a different way to me, who knows. But without further exception, exception, yes, without further exception, let's go tell the king of cats. A cat is snoozing in the middle of Lady Bones Road. Carriages and hansoms are backed up as far as spite. The problem is not that the cat is refusing to move. The problem is that the cat reacts with wild vengeance to any hand that dares approach its august presence. At some point, however, someone is going to have to take their life in their hands, lest the fury of inconvenienced Londoners boil over. Uh, we, we can move the cat, how hard can it be? We have a 100% chance, so... You come prepared. Three sets of oven gloves wrapped around your hand and encased in a steel gauntlet. The cat rolls over as you approach and gives you an adoring look, but you know better. You are prepared when it comes around your hand like a trap. You lift the cat, ineffectually kicking and biting at your protected hand, and deposit it in a nearby bucket for the Duchess to collect. As the crowds cheer your name, you can't help but wonder why the cats of London are so very terrible. You can visit the Season of Endeavour anywhere available in London to unlock this exceptional story. Okay, well here it is. Unlock the King, go tell the King of Cats. That is a very chubby cat, my god. Uh, available anywhere in London, okay. It sits on your mat expectedly. It has shed fur all over your anti-massage and has led something unspeakable in your slippers. It is presently snoring on your half. It is not your cat. Somehow, a generously proportioned tabby cat has found its way into your home. It has brought with it an air of wounded dignity and a faint but distinctive aroma. When it sees you, it lets out a long sigh. Good, there you are, at last. I have a request to make. Okay, so listen to the turbulent tabby. It might be important. It might get this importunate tabby out of your rooms. I couldn't help but notice the fine mat in your lounge. The density of its threads, the plushness of its carpeting. There, I thought, as I peered through your window. You must really clean it more often. I was forced to use my own saliva for a better view. Whoever owns such a mat is surely a person of quality. Exactly the sort of personage that I require. The turbulent tabby insists upon cream before continuing. If that requires a trip to the grocer, well, that is not his problem. Oh, this is definitely the way cats think. Cream procured, you find a bowl and place it in front of the tabby. He promptly puts his entire face into it. Ungodly noises ensue. So we can hear the end of this turbulent tabby's tail. He has finished licking the last of the cream out of your bowl. He seems inclined to talk, at least until he demands seconds. Every cat has a shadow in dream. When cats sleep, they move through the dreamlands as tigers or lions or leopards, or even ocelots. If they're unlucky, every cat, that is, except me, the tabby pauses for sympathy and to roll about on your carpet, its little legs treading softly as it turns over. I have borne this indignity for as long as I can remember, but though I do not appear it, I am not a young tabby. I would have my old form returned while I can still enjoy it, for which I need the Duchess who controls these privileges. The tabby coughs and looks, if not embarrassed, then at least temporarily abashed. She will not let me in to see her. A misunderstanding, I'm sure. That's where I need your help. I wish to be a lion again when I dream. 
But we have an audience with the Duchess. The turbulent tabby has requested your help in securing an invitation to the Duchess. The Duchess is London's most alarming aristocrat. She lives in comfortable seclusion in the shuttered palace, surrounded by her courts of many cats. The tabby believes she holds the key to restoring his other dream aspect, to let him stalk the fields of dream as a proud royal lion once more. Who can attempt an entrance? The Duchess protects all cats in London. Whatever misunderstanding occurred between her and the turbulent tabby, she must surely see his distress. Seeing the tabby, Putman usher you through the pale Queen Anne decor of the Duchess's outer chambers. Sensing the nearness of your quarry, the tabby begins to purr. Yes, he mutters, half asleep. That's the spirit, you clever thing. Another set of pastel double doors swing open. You are in the Duchess's auditorium, inches from the Duchess's salon. Unfortunately, the Duchess's personal secretary is at his desk. He sees the tabby and stands, finger trembling. Out! You have been told! His nostrils flare. A phalanx of footmen close in to spirit you both away. That didn't go well. You have been forbidden to speak to the Duchess by her staff. If you are to help the turbulent tabby, you will need to find another way into her salon. The turbulent tabby rolls over in your arms. Don't look at me. I have quite exhausted my own reserves of ingenuity. So we can, uh, can use our connections. We do have favours with society. Anyone who has aspirations of becoming someone spends at least a little time in the Duchess Salon. The Duchess famously either makes one's reputation or breaks it. Or we can trade on personal connection. You have an existing relationship with the Duchess that will allow you to sail merrily past her su private secretary. You can petition her re Rosaint Splendor. I'm definitely not an ab ambassador to Arbor. You have a mutual connection with the Duchess and are more than willing to get her involved. Let's trade on our personal connection because apparently I'm very connected to the Duchess. I'm not sure when this happened. You send a quick note to the Duchess directly, enclosing one of her favorite crushed surface flowers. You make no mention of the turbulent tabby. The response is swift. You are to come at once. The quality of servants in London has the Duchess comments, much room for improvement. Pale-faced, the Duchess's secretary nods you through and into the lavender-scented calm of the Duchess's salon. The Duchess is taking tea on her sedan and inclines an eyebrow. When you heft the turbulent tabby from your coat, she drops her teacup. What is he doing here? Her voice could chill the blood of a dead man. Sensing the Duchess's mood, various hangers-on, social climbers, and much-scratched servants make swift exits. Oblivious, the turbulent tabby makes for an inquisitive feathered cloak left on the Duchess's sedan and sits on it. After a moment, he begins to snore. It is an erratic snore, inconsistent, in its effect but continuous in volume. The Duchess fixes you with a gaze that would kill if it could. Evidently, he expects an explanation. Okay, so we'll start at the top here. Inquire about the turbulent tabby. He is dozing noisily on something precious of the Duchess's. This is an excellent opportunity to talk about him. The Duchess flares her magnificent aristocratic nostrils. I understand my partiality to the incomparable feline is the subject of much amusement in the city, but I will never be made to feel shame for my love of cats. The Duchess sits back on her sedan, pushing the turbulent tabby along to make room. However, I do not like this cat. This cat is wretched to his own kind. I cannot forgive that. Oh, he's not a very nice cat. Let's ask the Duchess about the other forms of cats. 
Why do cats appear other than they are in a dream? The Duchess sips her tea and considers you for a long moment. She sets the cup in her saucer and sighs. I might as well. That abominable creature is certain to let it slip anyway, wretched beast. The Duchess's hand brushes over the tabby's greying fur for a moment, and so briefly that you might have imagined it, gives him a slight squeeze. Cats have a sacred duty. They keep us safe from the self-styled kings of dream, who dwell deep in the lands of dream and seek to compel us. To help perform this duty, a cat wears a raiment more suited to the task. It's really cool. So that's why cats in dreams are tigers and things. That's really cool. Didn't know that at all. <laughs> okay, let's ask the Duchess about the turbulent tabby's leonine aspect. Why is the tabby no longer a lion when he stalks the fields of dream? The Duchess shakes her head. I make it my business to never reveal the findings of the court of cats to outsiders. Suffice to say, the court felt that that cat's behaviour to its own kind was reprehensible enough to merit such a reduction of status. The court of cats is a secretive body, more rumoured than encountered. Allegedly, it arbitrates disputes between felines under the Duchess's watchful eye. Its proceedings are secret, its judgments final. Okay, well we can make our request. Ask the Duchess to restore the turbulent tabby to its proud lion in his dreams. I don't think this is going to go well. The Duchess puts an immaculately manicured hand to her head. Goodness, to ask that. Beside her, a more potent smell emerges from the snoozing tabby. Irritated, the Duchess nudges him awake. The turbulent tabby bites or rather gums, a finger for her trouble. It's impossible. I am sorry that it had to be done, but once done, it cannot be undone. You, she addresses the tabby who hisses, might as well go and ask the king of cats to reverse this edict of the courts. Your behavior to your fellows merited the removal of your other aspect. It cannot be restored. Leave this uncomfortable salon did he do? Standing, she lifts the turbulent tabby and deposits him in your arms. The tabby rolls about, blithingly scratching your clothes and flesh as he gets himself into a more comfortable position. Now, if that is everything, I shall bring this regrettable salon to an end. He rings a bell, insistently and continuously, clearly not going to stop until you leave. <laughs> But we can leave, make your exit. The turbulent tabby is eyeing up the wallpaper meaningfully. Back beneath the gloaming fog of London, the turbulent tabby lets out a long and mournful sigh. I should have known, he says, rumoratively. Politics. Obviously I must have upset that accursed woman who made her queen of cats. Not me. I wasn't consulted. He jumps from your arms and lands with a thud on the cobbles. Still, the old fool might have just given me an idea. Meet me back at your lodgings. I must sit on your mat for a while to think. If my eyes are closed, I am thinking very deeply and must not be disturbed. Okay, so we need to go back to our lodgings. Down here now. The Tabby's Suggestions. The turbulent Tabby is on his back, stretched across your mat. Your mat is now grey, with shed fur. The tabby's coat is as thick as ever. A deep, ragged snoring emanates from the cat. His paws move, treading the air as though he is stalking something in his sleep. We can wake the turbulent tabby. It's been several hours. If you are to help him recover his lion aspect and dislodge him from your home, you'll need to hear his suggestion. Gingerly, you give the turbulent tabby's shoulder a nudge. He is a large cat, but you can still feel the bones beneath the fur. 
This close, you can see patches of poor grooming across the tabby's flank, as well as scars and greying fur. The turbulent tabby rolls over, trapping your hand where it remains for the duration of the conversation. The Duchess had one good idea, the tabby says. The king of cats. He dwells deep in dream, in a fabulous temple filled with virtuous cats. Though the stories say, he could restore me to my proper state. The turbulent tabby begins to purr, as though having made his wishes clear, all he needed to do now is, was to wait upon you carrying them out. Wonderful. Ask about the King of Cats. Why have you never heard of him? Indulgently, the turbulent tabby tells you of the fabled king. When cats became cats, they required a leader. But being cats, they could not choose one. A schism seemed inevitable. Before the squabbles became battles, a great cat emerged in dream. He was kingly in the form and mantle. He claimed to be the dream of cats made manifest, and that he could grant their wishes. After all, had he not already granted their first to have a king? Most cats think he's a myth, and I've seen him, but there are wild reaches of Parabola still uncharted. The tales say that his temple is near the smoking shore, where he awaits for his subjects to return to him once more. The tabby pauses. I might know a way. Through the wakeful court. The bandit prince there. It's rumoured knows where to find the king in dreams. I will need a character reference to petition the prince with. Luckily, I still have friends in London. They'll be delighted to assist me, I'm sure. Oh no. We need to collect character references for the turbulent tabby. He seems very confident of a positive reception. Who do you need to see? The turbulent tabby finishes clawing a rare book before absently pushing something expensive into the fire. Well, there's the calico. He's rather snooty, but we were thick as thieves back in the old days when we guarded the shore together. He's with the Duchess now. Then there's Ginger. Dumb as a box of rocks, but loyal. He's in the carnival now, I believe. And then there's the kitten. Well, he's been claiming to be a kitten for at least three years now, but other cats can be so vain. He sleeps in the Singing Mandrake. Okay, so... Singing Mandrake. Carnival. Duchess Chambers. Duchess Chambers. Apparently we can do most of these from just here? Okay. These pictures are amazing, I love them. Okay, let's go with the inestimable Ginger. The turbulent tabby has told you of an old friend, a ginger cat who resides in Mrs. Plenty's carnival. The tabby needs a character reference from him. Today, the carnival is quiet. Performers hang washing lines between the bright coloured tents. Gossip and smoke linger in the air like spent fireworks. The ginger must be somewhere in all of this. So we can search for the inestimable ginger. Just one glowing character reference and be out of this fur. We have a 100% chance of success. You pass... Gently snoring strongmen and hungover acrobats sprawled in front of water butts. Half of the performers have gone to church, the rest are asleep, drunk or both. As long as you are quiet, no one gives you a second glance. You search high and low, but find not a single cat in the carnival. When a chorus girl asks what you're looking for, and you mention a ginger cat, she grows quiet. You point you to a small plot on the edge of the carnival. It is a graveyard. One grave more recent than the rest reads Marmalade. Oh no, I think the cat might be dead. There is a veiled woman laying a pouch of catnip at the grave. She stands and turns. Despite her veil, you recognize the Duchess immediately. Oh, it's true, she says. I heard rumors you were actually looking for the King of Cats. Why is she here? Does she know the reference the ginger would have provided? The Duchess shakes her head. 
He lived together for a time, but the tabby knew, grew jealous of the affections of the humans who had adopted him. He chased the ginger from his home. I arranged th for the carnival to take him in, but it took some time to find him. He picked up some sickness on the streets. I believe he was happy here for a short time, until he went wherever cats go. He hands you a piece of paper. I will not discuss the court of the cat's business, but the tabby can see the testimony that was made against him. I had to take it to the court on Ginger's behalf. He was too ill, he sniffs. Perhaps he can use it as a reference. That seems bad. I mean, to be honest, this cat seems like a horrible cat. The Duchess' expression is inscrutable. I have never met anyone who has encountered the King of Cats. There were old stories, writings about Visage, that indicate that he might once have existed. I do not think you will find the King. Certainly, he is not likely to be as he is in the myths. I had hoped that the Tabby would reform before the end, rather than take up a fool's errand. The Duchess turns away. All that remains is deciding what, if anything, to tell the Tabby. We'll tell him the truth. Better than he know. This is called karma. When you return to your lodgings, you have to rouse the turbulent tabby from a deep sleep. He is disoriented, and he doesn't immediately recognize you. Dead, he says when you finish. Ginger? But he was younger than me, he shakes his head. Poor living, no doubt. I always warned him. Does he feel responsible? No. She's lying. Or he was confused. Our humans cared more for me. I wanted attention, and I demanded it. He was too shy. I'm sorry he blamed me, but we can't be other than we are, can we? The tabby shakes his head. He's keen to move on with your task. Okay, so the next one is the Impromptu Calico. The impromptu calico is cloistered deep within the personal chambers of the Duchess. How are we going to get in there? <sighs> Accessing the Duchess's salon is a challenge unless invited. Entrance to her private rooms is magnitudes more difficult. But the calico is one of the only cats in London that the turbulent tabby believes will provide him with a positive reference. We are definitely sneaking in. You will need to be as silent and graceful as a stalking cat. You wait until you see the Duchess's private secretary slip out of the disused side door. Up to the honey dens of Vale Garden, as is his custom. You filch keys from his pocket as he passes and gain entrance via the same door. The Duchess's private chambers are lusher than her public rooms. The colours are bright, blue and gold. Sunset frescoes outshine the drab palace decor. Collections of novels set in the Second City sit alongside histories of the same period on great Barku bookshelves. The sound of running water from the bathroom indicates the Duchess is at her absolutions. You have some time. There is an amber room at the heart of the Duchess's suite. Bright lamplight shines over a forest of imported plants. Toy soldiers toy cats on closer inspection dressed in miniature regimental uniforms litter a floor covered in sand. Castles and fortresses speckle the terrain, guarding craggy overlooks and lush rivers. Surveying this battlefield is an improper, fortunate calico, immaculately groomed and fierce-eyed. What do you want? she asks, a voice short and low. The turbulent tabby requires a character reference. If he is to convince the bandit prince to allow him passage to the King of Cats. The importunate Calico finishes rearranging a division of cats for a frontal assault on the tower filled with tiny crocade snakes. So, my old comrade has finally lost his senses. If the King of Cats existed, we'd have won the war by now. And yet, as we speak, we're losing the Castle of Fools' Feasts. Calico snorts. A reference? Well, he was an excellent comrade in arms until I was promoted above him. Then he gave away our position out of spite. Though he did at least warn me that he'd done it. Calico flicks over a soldier with her claw. That's the best I can say for him. 
Importunate Calico yawns. Feel free to use that as a reference, if the prince will even accept it. I hope the tabby proves worthy of your help. I really do. She returns to her plans. Her grand strategy is wrought in miniature. You slip out of the palace. You have your reference, but what will you tell the tabby? I'll tell him the truth. Character reference is not exactly glowing. The turbulent tabby has found his way into your pantry. He has a list of complaints as to its deficiencies. It takes a while before he hears what you're saying. His whiskers twitch. Oh, he says. He and I were friends. I don't remember. It doesn't sound like me, does it? His tail droops slightly. Then he rallies. Obviously being a general's gone to her head. No time for the likes of me now. She'll be sorry when I tell her I've seen the King of Cats. Eesh, sorry dude. This is not going well. Hmm, where is the singing mandrake? That's in Bell Garden, isn't it? Yeah, a notorious singing mandrake. Hmm. Ah. Oh. I actually had to click on the singing mandrake in the map. There we go. <laughs> Not to my finest moment, I will admit. An irrescribable kitten. The turbulent tabby told you that the irrescribable kitten can be found in the singing mandrake where he makes his home. On arrival, you find the usual throng of honey-mazed poets, sharp-elbowed artists, models and dreamy-eyed painters in the smoky lounge. The crowd is thickest, however, not at the bar or the stage, but around a settee at the back of the pub. Apparently, the most adorable kitten in all London is sleeping there. Let's talk our way through the crowd. You have business with that cat, sleeping or no. The singing mandrake serves roasted chestnuts at this time of year. You scoop up a dish and carefully pick your way through the crowd. A squeezing through here, uh, do you mind awfully there? All are smoothed over with the proffering of the roasted chestnut and a hearty invitation to go on, be naughty. You are soon at the front of the crowd. You wait for a trio of portraitists to finish their sketches of the perfect posture of the kitten in repose before seizing your moment. As you approach his couch, the kitten rolls onto his back and lets out a tiny, plaintive mew. He paws to the air for a few moments, purring and blinking. You do not leave. The irrescribable kitten scowls and rolls over into a more dignified position. I see you're not falling for it. What do you want? We can request a reference. The tabby listed the irrescribable kitten as one of his friends. Surely he'll help out. The kitten laughs. It is a comforting, soft laugh. Almost like a purr. That old... He wants a reference for what exactly? You tell him. The kitten rolls backwards, laughing. Drawing concerned glances from the crowd. Is he going to ask the king for a new personality? Good grief. Poor king. I wouldn't wish that tabby on him. The kitten rolls over. But he does know my actual age, and he hasn't let it slip. Yet I wouldn't wish him to think that we were there were hard feelings just because he lost me in the prick finger wastes when the Duchess appointed him to look after my education. You can use that as your reference. Oh, God. <laughs> Having provided his testimony, the kitten waves a tiny paw. Now away with you, my admirers await. You leave the mandrake back into the cool air of London. You have the kitten's testimony. You must only decide now how much of it to reveal to the turbulent tabby. Yeah, let's uh, skip telling the truth again. Turbulent Tabby is dozing in your laundry when you arrive. He complains about the condition of your linen. It is of insufficient softness. He only ceases when you mention you have spoken to the kitten. His tail twitches in irritation when you reveal the nature of the reference. I do not think that's entirely fair. It is my fault that 
if he wandered away. I looked for at least an hour. He swishes his tail. I'm sure he is quite mistaken. He is probably jealous of my superior stature anyway. Tabby? Tail, tail thuds against the floor. We have better things to do than dwelling on this carping. And now we have all the references, this seems like a perfect place to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think. Please like, subscribe, and as always, see you next time.